So we are reading a CSV file from my desktop and the name of the file is utilities and we'll store the results in utilities itself. So it has 22 observations and nine variables. If you look at this, you can see first column is company and then you have quantity variables from the second column onwards. We can look at the structure. So first variable is a factor variable and other variables are either numeric or integer. Next we do a scatter plot. So let's uh, do scatter plot of fuel cost and sales. So fuel cost versus sales and the data file we are using is utilities. So this is how the scatter plot looks like. We can add names of the companies next to the dots. We want to add text and labels equals company. So we are using first column. So this is how this uh, scatter plot looks like. There are some overlaps. So probably we can make some adjustments in the graph. We can specify position of company names. Let's use four. So it will be on the right hand side. If you use one, it will be at the bottom. And we can say size of the text 0.3. So now you can see the overlap uh, is less, but obviously you have names very tiny. We can increase that slightly 0.4. So this is much more cleaner. You can see there are four companies towards high sales, but low fuel cost. And then there is this group of companies in the middle have medium sales and medium to lower fuel cost. And these group of companies we can say have lower sales and higher fuel cost. So very broadly we can have three clusters. But these three clusters are based only on two variables. We can normalize a variable by subtracting mean and dividing by standard deviation. Please remember that for cluster analysis, we need to have quantitative data. First variable in the data set should be removed from further analysis. So I'm going to create Z, which will not have company in it. So from utilities, so we have all rows, but we subtract first variable. Now, if you type Z, you will see that company column is not there. Now we have only quantitative variable. But there are some variables which are very low in value like 0.6, 1.5. But variable like sales, this is in thousands, like 9,000, 5,000. So normalization is needed so that all the variables have a level playing field. It should not happen that just because some values are very high, they dominate the whole show. So when the clusters are being formed, we don't want one variable to dominate just because the observations are on the higher side. When we normalize all the variables, the average for each variable becomes zero and standard deviation is approximately one. So that creates a level playing field. So first we calculate a mean for all the variables. So we apply this to Z dataset and we put two here to indicate that we are doing this for columns because our variables are in columns. If we put one, that will be for rows. And then we say mean. And we'll store all these means in M. We can do the same thing and store all standard deviations in S. And then we can calculate a normalized data set Z. So once you have calculated Z, we can calculate what is called Euclidean distance. We can make use of function DIST for Z and we can store this in, let's say, distance. So we have uh, so many decimals. Let me make this more compact by using print command. So this is much more compact. So this gives you Euclidean distance among 
all different records. We have 22 rows in the data set. How close or how far each one is compared to others is listed here. So for example, there's a very high value six. So this means seventh row. So that company and 11th company, they are very dissimilar in terms of those variables because distance is quite high. But if you look at this one, this is 1.66. So companies seven and 12 in terms of Euclidean distance, they seem to be much closer. So a lot of similarity between these two companies. So now we can make cluster dendrogram and the default will give us complete linkage. So for that we will use H cluster. So H for hierarchical and cluster for cluster and we will use distance and we can store the outcome in HC dot C. So C to represent complete linkage. Now we can make dendrogram using plot command. So this is a cluster dendrogram. So because this is hierarchical clustering, initially each company is treated as a single cluster. And then we try to find which one is the closest one in terms of distance. So for example, companies 10 and 13, they seem to be very close to each other. So they are grouped into one cluster first. And this process continues till you reach a situation where all the companies form one big cluster. So when the height is about seven, at that point of time, everything becomes one huge cluster. If you have a horizontal line at let's say six, so that may give rise to one cluster here. So this is a big cluster. Second cluster could involve companies number 11, 8 and 16. And the third cluster would involve companies 17, 7, 15, 12 and 21 because they are very close to each other. If you look at 10 and 13 in this matrix here, 1.41. So that means these two companies or those two rows represented by 10 and 13 are very close to each other. So we can indicate the names by saying labels equals so we have to use utilities data set that we have and the variable is company so the names of the companies are now listed on the cluster dendrogram and at the bottom you can see this is complete type of linkage we can also make these lines align to each other using hang You can see all the lines are aligned horizontally. We can similarly make a dendrogram with the average linkage. So for that, let's call the output as hierarchical cluster hc dot a for average. So this is what you get. You can see now the method is average. So this is average linkage. Compared to the earlier one, obviously the formation of clusters are slightly different because we are using a different linkage. Now coming to cluster membership, we'll save membership information in member.c and we use a function cut tree, so hc.c and let's say we are looking at three clusters. We have only 22 rows of data, so going for too many clusters may not be advisable. Similarly, we can find memberships uh, based on average linkage. And then we can make a table. So this table tells us that using average linkage method, there were 13 plus 5 observations that belong to cluster 1. One observation belonged to cluster 2 and three observations belong to cluster three. So using complete linkage method, there were 13 plus one, 14 companies that belong to cluster one, five belong to cluster two, and three belong to cluster three. If you compare average linkage versus complete linkage, there were good match for 13 companies. Both methods listed them as cluster one. Whereas there were three companies where both 
indicated that these three belong to cluster 3. But then there is also some amount of mismatch. One company had a membership in cluster 2 based on average method, but this company had membership in cluster 1 if we use complete linkage method. Similarly, there are five companies that have membership in cluster 2 with complete linkage, but they belong to cluster 1 when we use average linkage. So this table allows us to compare these two different methods and see how cluster formation is behaving when we use average linkage versus complete linkage. We can also calculate cluster means. We can use aggregate command. So we are doing this for Z and the list we use is, let's say we are doing it for complete linkage method and we are calculating mean. So we get average values for the three clusters for each variable. Remember these are normalized values. So this will help us in characterizing these three clusters. If we do not see too much variation among these three averages for a variable, that means that variable is not really playing a very significant role in deciding cluster membership for the companies. If you look at sales, so there is a very high value 1.85 and then there is negative 0.67. Obviously sales seems to have significant impact on cluster membership. So this means that companies that belong to cluster 3, they have higher sales, whereas companies that belong to cluster 2, they seem to have lower than average sales. On the other hand, if you look at fuel cost, so companies in cluster 2 seem to have higher fuel cost, whereas companies in cluster 3 seem to have lower than average fuel cost. These averages indicate which variables are really playing an important role in characterizing the clusters. So this is very useful. You can also do this aggregation in original units. So these averages are now in original units. So interpretation becomes easier. We can also visualize the clustering using Silhout plot and for this we are going to use library called cluster. If you run this line where we are using hc.c, our hierarchical cluster is using complete linkage method and we are using three clusters right now in this analysis. And the function we are using is called cut tree and using that we are developing a Silhote plot. So if you run this, you get this plot here. If cluster formation has been good or the members in a cluster are closer to each other, SI values will be high. If they are not, then SI values will be low. This kind of visualization helps to identify clusters visually. If you have SI value which is negative, obviously that member in the group is a sort of outlier, does not really belong to that group. We can also develop what is called a scree plot. So a scree plot will require calculations of within group sum of squares. So within group sum of squares uh, I am representing here using WSS and how it is calculated is included here. Let me run these three lines. So the plot you get on the right side is called a scree plot. What it does is it gives you an overview of all possible clusters and within group sum of squares. So within group means uh, within cluster variability. We want to reduce within cluster variability. So when you go from one cluster to two clusters, you can see the drop in within group sum of squares is very large. Similarly, when we come here, you can see the drop is very large. But maybe somewhere here, like if you try to have five or more clusters, the improvement is not that significant. The drop in variability or within group sum of squares is not really that much. A scree plot indicates in this case that we should go for lower number of clusters, maybe two, maybe three. Beyond that, the gains are not very significant. We have to choose at the beginning how many clusters we are interested in. We can do this k-means clustering using k-means function and we'll use z or normalized uh, data set and let's say we go for three clusters. 
we can store this information in say kc so k means clustering so if you want to look at uh, what this analysis is giving us we can simply type kc and it gives a lot of information for example top line is k means clustering with three clusters of sizes 12 3 and 7 so first cluster has 12 companies in it second cluster has three and third cluster seven it also gives us cluster means then you have cluster membership so this clustering vector tells us that first company should go into cluster one second company belongs to cluster three based on this analysis and so on so then you have within cluster sum of squares within cluster variability is 58.01 for first cluster whereas for cluster 2 which has three members the variability is lower that means the members are closer to each other in terms of distance it also gives you between cluster sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares right now it is about 39.5 percent and then there are various components of this uh, cluster analysis that is available if you want to for example look at the first one you can say kc and dollar sign cluster this gives us the cluster memberships similarly if you do kc dollar sign centers you get averages you can also plot any two variables in the form of a scatter plot so let's try two variables d demand and sales so we are plotting sales versus d dot demand our data set is utilities uh, if you simply run this plot it will give you a scatter plot which looks like this you can color code those three clusters like this you can say color equals so now you can see that membership is indicated with the help of a color so remember in first cluster there were 12 observations so these circles that are black in color those are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 companies similarly second cluster has three companies these three and green ones are third cluster so you can see second cluster separation from first and third cluster is very good there is hardly any overlap but between first and third cluster there is a lot of overlap clustering is good when between cluster distance is high and when within cluster distance is low so in this case we get a good separation for second cluster but first and third cluster for these two variables are not really that good